Good evening, this is your S2 with your country brief on Pandacar as we continue our preparation for deployment. I'd like to start out by pointing out the location of Pandacar, which is in the Middle East, firmly nestled within the Ottoman Ocean, just at the southern boundary of Russia and just north of Saudi Arabia. Now, you'll notice in the flag here that the national colors of Pandacar represent significant parts of its heritage, green being the Islamic influence of the country and purple representing the influence of the government and the Kevi people as as a whole on the mainstream culture of the country. The star you see on the flag and, and in the coat of arms reflect the Kevi tradition which reaches back into its roots as the people that have formed this country. Let me orient you to the geography briefly. As you'll note, Pandakar is once again in the Ottoman Ocean and is surrounded to the north by Russia, to the west by the countries of Trumania and Azir, and on the south by Manovia. Now, Pandakar has a very rich terrain, and if you'll look to the north, you'll notice the Champion Mountains, which is a fairly high elevation mountain range, and over to the west is another mountain range, which is a significantly lower elevation. Um, dry and rugged in that region. Also to the south is the Central Desert which is shared with Monovia and in between is the Sophia Arax lowland which is subject to floods and various other natural disasters which occur fairly regularly. But what brings us into our current deployment is the political background of the country and if I can just highlight a couple of the recent events the Clooney family has been in power within the country since the early 19th century but during the 1990s, they had turned towards corruption, siphoning off significant amounts of the petroleum revenues for their own benefit. And this, of course, has led the people into a state of economic distress. Civil unrest from that region ultimately led to the conflict that we are facing today. So about two years ago, the emir was overthrown by his son, Hamad bin Khalifa al Cluni, in a coup that sent the Amir Samad bin Khali al Cluni up to the Champion Mountains where he and his followers have formed a rebellion group called the Pandakar Alliance Liberators or the PAL. Now it's important to recognize that the son Hamad bin Khalifa al Cluni is the recognized leader of the country and the US seeks to retain his power within the country. Now, looking back at the historical timeline, we'll get a little bit more insight into the Panikar culture. So, if we go back to the beginning, what we find is a people which were rooted in the Kevi clan were a nomadic people wandering through various regions of the Ottoman Empire. In the early 17th century, however, the British and the Spanish came in to colonize the area and, of course, brought their cultures and religion in, into the region. In 1823, the first Clooney family member was elected as a regional governor, and this led to a long period of reign by this family in the Clooney monarchy. But in 1954, the Soviet Union occupied Pandakar and abolished all elections. But the Clooney family was influential enough that they were able to regain influence with the Soviet Union, maintain a certain amount of autonomy, and of course, ultimately in 1991, when the Soviet Union fell, the Republic of Pandakar once again regained its independence. So we fast forward to two years ago, and when we see the coup that I talked about on the previous slide, and more recently, six months ago, the Clooney regime has passed a referendum which suspends all elections. This, of course, has led to a significant amount of civil conflict resulting in our current deployment. Now, backing out and looking at a bit broader view of Panikar, we see a country that's approximately 86,000 square kilometers, which, more importantly, is slightly larger than the state of Maine, for reference. And we see a GDP, which is somewhere in the lower half of nations throughout the country. Very diverse geography. We'll come back to that uh, a little bit here on this slide when we look at the weather and climate. Now, as a result of the terrain, you'll see quite a bit of moisture up in the northern region, uh, very dry in the south, and a little bit more moderate in the western parts of the country. Temperatures are very high in the summers uh, throughout the country, particularly in the desert, and in the winters can be very cold, particularly in the mountainous regions. Now, the terrain is diverse enough that what you see is some natural political boundaries forming around the different terrain areas as you see on this slide. 
uh, ranging from the Sophia Iraq's lowland, which is defined by its floods and natural disasters. The Rotter region, as you can see, is very mountainous and rocky, very moist up in the northwest, very dry and desert-like down in the southern regions. Now, seen on this slide is Mount Lutz, which is the tallest mountain in the country and is situated in the Champion Mountains. Mount Lutz stands about 20,000 feet tall and significantly taller than the remainder of the mountains in the region. It's seen here with the backdrop of the city of Carr, which gives you a little bit of flavor of the architectural climate of this region. All right, we turn now to looking at the people of the, and the government of Pandakar. And what you see is a fairly homogenous group of people. 90% of Pandakari people are from a Pandakari background. There is some immigration from local countries, Truman Knights 2%, Russian 2%, Aziri 2%, and other 4%. But by and large, the people in Pandakari have Pandakari heritage. They also speak the Pandakari language. 90% of people speak this language exclusively, while Russian, Lizzi, and Azirian are also languages that are spoken by minorities. You will primarily need to be speaking in Pandakar. Very little English is spoken in Pandakar. On the religious front, there's also quite a bit of homogeneity. 75% of the country is Muslim. The other 25% being various forms of Christian. They do have their own form of Christianity coming from the neighboring country of Aziri. And there are a number of pagan influences coming back from the Kevi origins, which we've talked about recently. A number of factions in the area that are important to note are the Nathites, Malvani, and Ghanaks, which have heritages that come from their various economic activities and influence the political climate within the government. Now, the government, as you know, is an emir, and it is a republic, but again, elections have been suspended, and we're beginning to see it turning more towards the flavor of monarchy or even dictatorship, although officially it is an elected government. The Clooney family has been in power in various forms of government again since the 19th century and the current chief of state is the Amir Hamad bin Khalifa al Clooney. Now I'll mention this now because it is potentially difficult to remember. The current Amir, Amir Hamad bin Khalifa al Clooney, that's Hamad beginning with an H, has a very similar name to his father, uh, Samad bin Kala al Clooney, and that can be very difficult to keep straight. Note the S is the father and not the son, and that is probably the best way to remember that. Now, they do have a constitution that was approved in 1993, shortly after its independence, and several branches of government which reflect what you may see in the West. But what we tend to see in Panikar is a government that is not particularly interested in hearing the public opinion of its people, and so frequently we will see agents of the government acting in various ways to influence the silence of the people. Now, turning again to the importance of the Kevi traditions in the country, uh, throughout years there's been a lot of unrest associated with these people that have been persecuted in various capacities. And as a result, they've been forced to migrate throughout the country. And here, as you can see, there are a number of Kevi people living throughout the world, all over the world, influencing people through the local governments to provide some international support of the country itself. Like many countries, the culture in Pandakar is rooted in its arts. In Pandakar, they have developed their own form of music, art, dance, architecture, very rich cuisine, very rich literature dating back to 400 AD, and very rich architecture. Primarily, the culture of this country has been defined by its history of conflict, nomadic migration, and occupation. The language of Pandakari is one of the oldest in the country. Very unique alphabet. They, they had formed their own alphabet and very unique pronunciations and words. It can, in fact, be a very difficult language to learn, so you will probably often rely on translators in order to communicate with the people. Now, like many cultures, the culture is strongly influenced by its religious belief systems, and Pandakari is, is no different. So we turn to the Pandakari religious history to get a little bit of insight into where their culture is coming from. So if you look back to the nomadic Kevi era, these people worshipped at that time a number of pagan Kevi gods. You'll notice the gold star as the national symbol of Pandakar was rooted in this history as the horses were adorned with a star symbol that was believed to be an amulet that would protect them from their pagan gods. 
Now, when the Ottoman Empire came in, they brought Islam into the country and, of course, enforced the practice of Islam through the people. And then later, when the Spanish and British governments came in during the colonial era, they brought in Christianity, which, again, was enforced relatively strongly. Of course, later, when the Soviet Union occupied the area, they abolished all religious practices together, and the pagan gods continued to remain the one common stream of spiritual belief, if you will, leading to the current culture, which in spite of being Islamic and Christianity, it still is influenced significantly by the pagan gods. In fact, the Pandakar death ritual that you see today is rooted in the original Kevi tradition, and the Bakla ceremony reaches back to this period as well as a reflection and celebration of one of their prophets, Tamakla, the patron of celebration. Now, a number of cultural concerns exist, and these will seem very familiar if you are used to operating in the Arabic world. Like most Arabs, Pandakaris have great respect for the written word, and so you need to be careful about what you dispose in your trash. Of course, we don't want to wrap anything up in Pandakari or Arabic language newspaper, as an example, since it might contain Allah's name. Your left hand is considered unclean, so always use your right hand when gesturing or when greeting. And when sitting, keep both feet on the ground. Arabs do not cross their legs when sitting, and you would not want to expose the bottom of your feet, as that's considered offensive. Now, the military of Pandakar is small, but effective in its mission, which is primarily to defend the country's borders. It was founded in 1992 with the independence of the country and consists of three arms, the Guardian Army of Pandakar, or the GAP, the Guardian Navy of Pandakar, the GMP, or the Guardian Air Force of Pandakar, the GAFP. Now, do note that the Army of Pandakar is organized into Pandakar Infantry Divisions, so you'll frequently hear the Army referred to as the PID, or the Pandakari Infantry Division. The Guardian Navy of Pandakar is relatively small, about 5,000 strong. It does have a number of patrol boats which serve the purpose of patrolling the marine borders of Pandakar. Well, seven patrol boats, seven minesweepers, six landing craft, and their recent acquisition of an AB-25 patrol boat from Turkey, again, primarily serving the local waters of the Ottoman Ocean. The Guardian Air Force of Pandakar is similarly small. They're uh, particularly proud of their recent acquisition of the EC-135 European helicopter, which you'll see throughout the country. They also fly a number of jets, including the MiG-29, and they have four air bases throughout the country, as you can see depicted on the map to the right. Bombers are situated at the Air Force base in a car, and you'll see that the fighters are out of, flying out of Mushar and Panda Air Base. Now, a number of issues that affect the relations with the neighboring countries. We've mentioned Lazar Tamubak before. Uh, do remember that this is the congregation of Kevi traditionalists who have seceded in the nation and, in fact, have declared their own independence. Enough conflict has surrounded this area that it led to a number of military engagements and, fortunately, a ceasefire that remains in effect over the last decade. To the south, Monovia has just recently resolved a long-standing disputed butte with Pandakar, which affected both the, the land borders and the marine borders around Monovia. While the ceasefire is in effect and the agreement has been place, there are still a number of small minor military engagements that prop up around these areas from time to time. Pandakar is situated in a location that intercepts trafficking of persons and drugs from the Middle East into the Western world in Europe. And so as a result, uh, illegal trafficking of persons and drug trafficking is a significant problem in Pandakar. As you can see, we're dealing with a very rich, conflicted, and in some cases well-developed and in other cases less developed society and culture it will be a challenge for all of us as we enter into Pandakar to maintain cultural awareness of the people and what matters to them as we sit at the table to make political decisions.